Do -do -do -do. It's a Jeep thing. A compass. The guy had it towed here. Told me he didn't dare drive it. Huh. <laughs> Fixed. Well, I guess we better take it for a shakedown. See if it, uh, see if something happens. We don't have a scan tool or anything with us. Let's come and let's rock and roll. Oh, there we go. Uh-oh, we're barely moving now. Four-wheel drive, traction, engine light. Flashing throttle light. Wow. Now we did it. Now we gotta take the slow ride around town because we're limited. I don't dare shut it off. Because I don't know if it's gonna restart, so I figure we'll play it safe than sorry. We'll kind of coast back to the shop here. hours. Okay, it does take a little throttle input. Feels like it's misfiring though. Huh, until you put it in gear then it smooths out, but well, I'd swear that's misfiring. Just gonna shut her off here. We've got a PO 456, so that's gonna be what EVAP. Gotta have more than that. 2101. Mm, something with fuel. 2118. No, 2101 wouldn't, wouldn't be. That's my bad. 2110. Well, wow, so you got a few codes in it. And that's it. So, okay, it does restart. Everything's out except the engine light. I wonder if we can rev it up. Okay. So we can rev it up so it doesn't seem to be a throttle input thing. I wonder if it just comes on when we move it. Well, we're moving it backwards right now. Okay, so it's good there. In the drive. Let's drop her, or in reverse, let's drop her and drive. Fixed. better hang a Louie here. I don't want to go out on the big road and have to sneak it all the way back home. So interesting. So shutting it off, starting it up, fixed it. Obviously the money light's still on. So we've learned a couple of things here. Okie dokie, let's have a look here. I, I'm very aware that uh, there's an email address up here. So just before we get all the comments on that, uh, we can see, so all these modules with yellow uh, all have code stored in the TCM and the PCM also have a flash available. We're not super worried about that unless it pertains to our problem. Uh, here's all of our codes. So we're going to go right to the PCM. ABS is kicking on because it's not receiving correct data from uh, the uh, from the edge computer. So that's that's normal. Um, and same thing with the transmission control module and plausible data received. So that's not unusual to see that. Uh, let's see, and then we've got some radio problems here we're not worried about. And then the all-wheel drive also is receiving implausible data. So, PCM-wise, let's just pop right back here and we'll go just to the PCM to kind of make it easier. Uh, there we go. So electronic throttle control motor performance. Electronal, electronic throttle control system, force limited. So that looks more like that's uh, an action. Uh, unable to open. And throttle motor current. Okay, so this is all pretty interesting. Uh, these are the two active codes right now. Let me fire this pig up. Because it must be in limp mode right now, and it is. So the throttle light's flashing as we speak. Four-wheel drive light's on. Traction light just popped on. Let's shut the key off key back on start it and it's still broken so that's good so turn the key back on uh, so that's good at least it's broke broke uh, I say we uh, do a little poking in some service data see what these codes are make sure there's no service bulletins or uh, perhaps there is 
uh, just kind of cover our bases and then see what we need to do. And I think before we do any of that, uh, we can take a little peek under the hood just with our peepers. You guys know what kind of mice problems and rodent problems I tend to run into. Uh, although the vehicle looks uh, relatively clean, I don't smell the stinky stink. Not that I can smell the mouse too good anymore after the Rona. But let's uh, go out and have a little peek and see if we see something with our peepers. Where you at, baby? Oh, there's it. Oh, wow, that's stiff. Almost holds up on its own. Dun, dun, dun. So these have that fuse box down in the fender there that tends to rot out, but I think that only runs the fans and mm, fuel pump, maybe? Something like that. So let's just pop this uh Maybe it's already been in here because it's shiny. Let's make sure nobody's living down here with the green crusties. Throttle body's way here at the bottom. I can see the connector on it down there. Doesn't appear that anybody's touched it. It's dusty and dirty. Doo -doo -doo. Looks like it's probably a dirt road car, so corrosion is a potential. Ooh, those lines are looking ugly, whatever they run. Alright, well, we know what it looks like under the hood. Let's not touch anything and go uh, check out some service data here. So I just looking here in service data under the 2110, we're going to start somewhere. Uh, the force limited RPM of the electronic throttle control gives us a diagram here of the PCM. It looks like the accelerator pedal, the throttle body, more PCM. Gives us who's who down here. Uh, it gives us a diagram of inside the throttle body showing a classic solid state transistor uh, H bridge, I guess they call it, uh, where it can reverse the polarity on the two wires to run the electric motor forward and backwards. Uh, same motor with just two wires. So that's how it controls that. Gives a little story about it down here uh, stating that. Um, the PCM performs diagnostics on the DC motor in the circuits. If the PCM detects that the current draw or pulse width modulation to the DC motor is too high or low for a calibrated period of time, then the PCM determines that the motor or circuitry is faulty and not operating properly. Uh, it also makes a note here that it can detect circuit high or circuit low faults during operation, uh, but it states whereas, so it means there's something coming next. Open circuit detection can only occur when the component is not being commanded. So that's, I would think is pretty normal. Uh, engine has to be running, set conditions, PCM request limited speed, and electronic throttle control pulse width modulation is too high for more than 1.2 seconds and before a P2118 sets. So this is kind of making sense um, because didn't we have, I think we had a high current code also, motor current performance. So let me look up that 2118 and see what that states. We might, um, we might be onto something. Let's see what the code set criteria is for this. Gives us the same stuff here. Yada, yada. Uh, set condition. The powertrain control module detects that the electronic throttle control motor driver duty cycle is over 80% for more than 5 seconds. Wow, so it's really trying to put it right to it, so to speak. And uh, evidently it doesn't move, um, or it's just, it is moving, but it's, it's groaning. It's making this face, you know, like when you're really trying to push one out, like it's, it's too much. Uh, so that's what I'm assuming. Uh, let's see, if pulse width modulation stays above 80%, a 2110 will set first. And if the fault persists, a 2118 will follow. So, okay, the mill will be on, the electronic throttle light will flash. So let's go back here. The way I understand it, this 2110 set first, the 2118 was uh, to follow. I'm assuming the unable to open is because it was making the funny face. 2112 and it wasn't opening so perhaps these are all just cause and effects here let's just check that out a 2112 bring you guys right along over right here we'll just do it in the raw raw and uncut 
And this one says, when the powertrain control module detects that the throttle body, throttle body blade that sells seas, shells by the seashore is not in the correct position when checked during the closing spring return test. Okay, so it must have a self-test that it does. Um, ignition on, electronic throttle motor, self-learn procedure has been completed. Condition is when it's not in the correct position. This is sounding like we got a funky throttle body, is my guess. And then let's check out our very last code. Uh, we already did that, we did that, we did that. Let's do the 2101. Come on, fella. We're gonna go up here, 2101. Uh, it sets when there is an error between the actual position and the desired position of the electronic throttle control motor driver based on the rate of change. It exceeds a calibrated threshold for one second. This is all very interesting. Um, I'm thinking that we have a throttle body assembly that's going wonky. Now I think if we look through Chrysler's, uh, how do I fix this chart? Uh, they probably just have us confirming uh, some wire integrity, which is, is a good test. And this is one thing I do like about Chrysler. Now their cars are complete garbage, as we all know, but their service data, the guy that's been writing their service data, he's top notch. Uh, because he's a test light and scope guy and a no-nonsense kind of fella. Let's see here uh, Let's see so yes, yeah, so we have some stuff they want to check, you know some visual inspections here uh, Letting us know the intermittent loss from one sensor may set the code We're gonna do some visuals with our peepers to check terminal tension this and that uh, But then look at this boom. This is a no-nonsense kind of check right here my guys uh, this is where it uh, looks like they're unplugging two components and they're passing current through it with a 3156 bump. That is what I'm talking about. None of the stupid, worthless ohm checking. They want to make sure that that circuit can carry current. And I think I've seen also where they explain how to measure voltage drop across the bulb to figure out total circuit resistance. Like this is fantastic stuff and this is how circuits should be tested. Uh, of course, we always try to shortcut that process. But yeah, we've got to come up with with what we've what we're gonna do. Um, but it sounds like we probably ought to see if we can even get our fingers on a throttle body first, because I'm thinking take this right back off. We'll pull this little fella off. We'll get to that throttle body and we'll give it the old the old tickler here to see if the throttle plate is stuck. It looks pretty crusty. It looks OG. That's this is highly unusual for an SMA video. Typically, when we get stuff, somebody's already done did it. They already shot the can. We're gonna pull the intake air temp out so we don't set codes against it. We're gonna unhook this. I'm also gonna have to call the customer because I'm assuming with the evap code in it that the light's been on for a while. I see his inspection is good in February. So he's probably been driving it with the light on and, and then this has happened. So just so we don't get burned by fixing this and then the light comes back on for the evap leak. Hmm. Oh, can reach that one with this screwdriver or not? It's probably too long. Yes, sir. Let's get something a little shorter here. Super awesome design, right? Who comes up with this crap anyways, you know? Yeah, it's not gonna end well for this little clip, just for the record. I'm trying to give it a little wedgie here to get the pop out, wedge it over. Yes, baby, it didn't even break. Can you believe that? Can you believe that? Got this baby out. What? Always do that. Oh, she's filthy. Filthy, filthy, filthy. Okay, 
I'm gonna shut the key off, I think. I'm gonna get you guys where you can see. But before I do that, I just wanna stick my finger in there. I don't know why. Let's see, hopefully it doesn't bite me. Doesn't seem to bind up or anything funky, so like it's physically stuck. It is quite coked up though. You can see it's just pretty filthy. Um, but like I say, it doesn't really seem to bind up when I push in on it. So let's watch up here on some scan data. Got her up on the screen. I'm going to push the throttle plate and see if both throttle position sensors are working as I move it in and out. And they appear to. So one goes up in voltage, the other one goes down. It's kind of just for some redundancy. But we're not having TPMS, or TPMS, TPS codes. But we can see that the throttle position definitely seems to work. Ah, uh, let's have a, a little peek there at the plug. It's not broken, the lock tabs aren't broken yet. So that's good. Connector looks good and clean. Well, that's good. Well, I frigged myself on this one, folks. Shouldn't have been fiddling off the camera, but I was. I, I got my mirror and my ES Wave test kit, and I wanted to hook on to both sides of the motor. I was going to check it for an open. You know, I was going to use an ohmmeter, but I said, ah, you know, we got these alligator clips. Let's just drive the motor back and forth. And I was sitting here flicking it, giving her one of these, and the motor wasn't moving. And I ran it in the opposite direction to close the motor, and the motor was closing, you know, the little bit that it could. So like an idiot, I reach down there and give it a push, and then it starts working, and now it's not breaking again. Because my original intention was either A, check it with an ohm meter, or use some visual representation, like a test light. And we're gonna just, we're passing current through the motor, and what my hope was, is as I move that throttle plate, we would see the light go out, perhaps, if we got to a, you know, a bad spot. And I think it's too late because now that we've been fiddling with it, by we, I mean I, we're not going to see that bad spot. So I'm just taking the motor through its whole sweep. Of course, it's unplugged right now. Don't do this when it's hooked to the engine computer. Let's see if I can't. Trying to wiggle the plates back and forth here. Just wanted to see something there is. Of course, now it's snapping shut all the way. You know, that's it's pretty peculiar. I'm. Mean, about 99% certain at this point we have a bad throttle body. Yeah, see right there, well, there is a, quite a binding spot here at the bottom. Right there, I got it kind of stuck open. Let me just make sure, oh, okay, it's because it's holding a little bit of current through that test light. I just wanted to make sure, because even without the test light in place, there, there is a bit of a bind here at the bottom where it's, where it's quite catchy. When I try to push it slow, it I can almost make it stick there. Yeah, it's on the way back down before it hits the close spring. There is quite a catch on it. And I think that was one of the codes also was, or the code set criteria when it was trying to test its close spring position. Gosh, I wish I would have recorded it the first the first stinking shot because like I say it was stuck pretty good. But now it's working flawlessly. Come on, just stick you ding dong. Nah, heck with it. So I'm a bit curious now because you can see right now, so there's no, no voltage being applied to the motor currently but the throttle plate is stuck shut. And if I touch it, you know, whichever way it goes that way, then it pops open. So it's physically, you know, binding at that point right there. 
and then, then I actually have to push it open. So let's see if I reverse the polarity. So we go here, negative to negative and positive to positive, it should fling it open. And it does. But I don't know how much current the PCM is willing to apply to it. So what I'm wondering is if once it goes into its closed throttle test and it gets stuck, you know, is that when it generates a code, it goes to its closed throttle test, it tries to open the motor, you know, it hits a certain period of time where, okay, we're putting it to it, but nothing's happening. So I guess what I'm getting at is before we wing a throttle body at it, is it worth, you know, cleaning it, clean all the coking out of there, being that we can see it physically binds right there. We actually have to push it to pop it open. Uh, I guess one thing we could do if we were that curious is throw a current clamp on it and see how much current and measure the pulse width modulation going to it and see if it's at this point. I almost don't care that much because it is binding quite badly right there in the full closed position. It comes off pretty easy for bolts and then another bolt over here on a bracket. We can see here now. You know, you can see where it's stuck, stuck, where it sticks, and it's actually kind of tore up the coking here a little bit. So right now it's stuck shut, and you have to pop it open. Is that the problem? Heck if I know. But well, we're gonna give her a little spritz of uh, some throttle body cleaner. It potentially could be the problem. It's on the list of things to do and it makes set makes sense with the code set criteria the only thing that doesn't really sit well with me is i don't believe it was stuck when i told you guys i was filming with it off camera it wasn't in the full closed position when it was acting up i don't believe what i need to do is learn not to touch things without turning the camera on so we're just using a nylon brush And just give her a little spritz of some throttle body cleaner. Now she's shiny. And then we'll do the other side of the throttle plate and the top side of the throttle body here. Who remembers uh, Birkenbile 2 plus 2 throttle plate cleaner, thr carb cleaner? Woo! This guy does, my eyeballs do. That stuff will wreck your world. I don't know what it's made of, but it's not good for you, I'll tell you that. This stuff's probably not good for you either. Used to do these in our parts washer, but now we've got our Governor Andrew Cuomo eco-friendly save the environment parts washer. <laughs> Which loosely translates that you can't clean with it, but... Wow. Wow. <laughs> All kinds of confusion right there. Kill your mother, rape your dog. <laughs> Hard to drive around like a tough Harley guy when you got Alexa telling you which way to turn. <laughs> Let's see. I think it looks shiny. Okay, I don't even like fingerprints on it when I put it back in. Well, let's see here, folks. Got a little sidetracked. We're just gonna go to all DTCs and we're gonna wipe them right out of there. Let's see, so all our codes are gone. So let's reach in. Of course, the ABS light and stuff's flashing. Let me just back back out of here. Back to this apology. Okay, we should be good. I'm gonna take it to shut the key off. back on to see if the throttle light comes on or starts flashing rather and it is not I've still got everything tore apart up here all right like I say if you're doing a throttle body it's just the four bolts and then the little bracket there that hooks to the transmission um, let's give her the old uh, rev up tune up here real quick 
don't hit the wiper, so I'll tell you that. It's in a computer flying. Let's give her one of these. All right. We're going to take her up there, bud. Okay. I think it was out of gas, wasn't it? Oh, no, nope, it's the other truck I'm working on. Alright, let's see. Let me put my seatbelt on. Dude, dude, time gets away from us so fast here. We got a million things happening. I thought we didn't make it very far. I don't want to pour it this guy's crossage. Oh. Guy sounds like he needs some uh, brake work there too. Hear that? Yeah, front wheels, back wheels, everything's making noise on this rig. I haven't had a chance to call the customer yet to see if he was having uh, EBAT problems. But I'm sure they were. this guy that'd be embarrassing oh she's ripping now fellas we'll do some we'll do some de-accelerations with it too I don't know what at what point it does its closed throttle uh, spring test Probably on D cell would be my assumption. That's just guessing. So we're gonna do a couple different throttle ranges. Tires are way out of balance. Steering wheel shakes like crazy. But we've made it quite a bit further than we did our first go around here. giant hill. looking trucks. I don't want to stir up the dust. I don't know, folks. It looks like uh, I think we have a fix here. Well, get back off the vibrators, fella. We're gonna have to go back to the shop. I'm gonna rescan it for coach, but I've given it a various array of driving conditions and throttle positions uh, from WOT to idling, to, you know, everywhere's in between and it hasn't had a little hitch in its giddy up yet. So we'll go back and check coach and then after that, we're gonna ship it. It's kind of the only pisser about uh, Y Tech is we need internet to make it work. Tether with my phone on test drives. Okay, so we have zero codes. Oh, wait a minute, that's interesting. It said zero flashes. Didn't this thing have, I was gonna say, yeah, it's got two flashes available, uh, but no codes. So that's good. 
Okay, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, it's too flat. There is a PCM update for the uh, uh, for the engine, but nothing to do with our symptom. I did go through and, and read the bulletin on it here, and it doesn't have anything to do with our problem, so we're not gonna worry about it. But no codes, so I guess we'll just leave it because there's really nothing more we can do. Um, I don't think it really constitutes putting a new throttle body on it at this point. Uh, being that I was able to duplicate the symptoms, that seemed to fit pretty well to the criteria. Now, I can't definitively say that because we'd never checked uh, the pulse width modulation of that motor and watch it go over 80%, which would equate to however much amperage, we don't know. They don't publish that in data, they just publish the, the pulse width modulation side of it. Like, okay, well, it's, you know, we're usually around 40, I think it said, but you know, it starts creeping up around 80, then it holds it there for more than a second for one code, and then five seconds for the other code, and then, you know, Bob's your uncle. So, you know, we could have went through and done all that and caught it, you know, in the act, you know, watch the, the command for the pulse width modulating, increase and then had an amp clamp on it and watch the amperage increase and then you know perhaps the throttle blade snaps open at that point or we just kind of fiddle with it with our fingers and be like yeah that's definitely binding at the bottom part of service data was you know checking for a coked up throttle body and uh you know if that's the case clean it and i've seen this before on other uh, electronic throttle bodies where we have you know circuit code so to speak and it's you know actually just a dirty throttle plate and it, it binds are very intolerant of you know binding or you know any current draw that is outside of their limits which are usually a very tight window uh, which stands a reason that they have you know lots of redundancy built into these throttle systems because there is no mechanical cable anymore so if something is slightly off you know, they're going to kibosh the whole system, shut it down. They're not going to take the chance and end up being like the runaway Priuses or, you know, whatever else there. But I think that was via the floor mat. But anyhow, you can see why that they have redundant type systems building this. Two throttle positions, two APP sensors, uh, you know, and then the fact that it monitors, you know, how much current is this thing taking to open and close? Here's our normal window. Uh, okay, something's, something's up flag a code shut it down safest thing to do uh, the safest thing to do would be put the throttle cable back on it but I, I can see from both ends <laughs> you know why we have throttle by wire and you know the uh, I don't know what I want to say like the the beauty of the cable you know I mean that was fantastic but whatever the times are changing folks pretty soon it'll be freaking bluetooth who knows whatever uh but i do know this the one thing i do know is i need you to go into that comment section i need you to subscribe and ring the bell and watch for the notifications and while you're down there leave a comment and the thumbs up and find us on the insty the patron the whatever else the facebook i almost forgot about that and the teespring if you want to buy an sma shirt without a pocket and uh, do some cleaning around the house with it and just remember viewers if i can do it you can do it. Thanks for watching.